people of the interweb, I'm Nostalgic Dave, and welcome back to Lynn. This is possibly the last episode of the entirety of this entirety thing. Yes, that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, hey Lynn, it's been a while since I last saw you in your uniform. How's it now? Oh, hey Jazz. Oh yeah, we just woke up from a nightmare. <laughs> And we're at 90% stress too, that's not good. I give my sister an awkward smile. I don't want to smile awkwardly, of course. Who does? Good question. Now! Now! <laughs> but after my dream last night, it's a little hard to act completely normal, natural. Now! <laughs> You, you all right? You look kind of pale. Nuh-uh, I look pretty as a lark. <laughs> I'm fine, I'll live. Heh, <laughs> you sure? Jazz smirks and takes a bite out of her toast. It's smeared with strawberry jam. Bright red against the brown. The brown. Down! I don't even know why you're still doing that. Ah! ah. <laughs> Toast makes me think not of blood, but something far more sinister. Charred flesh. Ugh. The thick smell of freshly toasted bread that lingers in the kitchen doesn't help. Here's a top tip from a girl who failed all her GCSEs. Don't pass out in the exam hall. Uh, okay. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> That's what they all say. But there's always one kid who passes out every year. Always. Oh! Is that so? Well, true. Close enough. <laughs> Down! Mm, I mean, it happened in my in my school year. There was a kid who passed out, and then the down. Okay, whatever. Just stay up, like <laughs> teacher. <laughs> there, there was a kid who passed out in the math exam. I can remember it like it was yesterday. It was pretty funny, honestly. Oh. Hmm. I think Jazz is trying to lighten the mood, but she's not exactly filling me with confidence. Funny thing is, he wasn't a stupid kid. Not like me. He was smart. He studied a lot. Maybe that's why... Jazz ponders. Her lips are encrusted with a fine film of toast crumbs. Okay. Maybe smart kids put too much pressure on themselves. When they don't do as well as they want, they freak out. Yeah, as for me... Jazz shrugs. <laughs> I knew I was going to fail any, any, everything, so I never really bothered. It didn't seem like there was any point in worrying. Even though Dad kept pushing you? Eh. Water under the bridge. <laughs> Actually, no, water in my belly. Even so, I know what my limits are. Maybe you just didn't try hard enough. <laughs> I didn't try at all. <laughs> okay. You shouldn't sound so cheerful about it. I know, I know, it pisses Dad off too. I can eat, I can see why though. Well, Dad works in construction, Mom works at a checkout. We don't come from a smart family. I'm not a smart girl. I have no illusions of greatness. I think I do. <laughs> I don't know. That's why Dad wants us to succeed. Well, I'm plenty happy living my life without amounting to anything. Thank you very much. Sorry! <laughs> but what about society? <laughs> what a society? 
What have they done for me recently? Bon? Does she count? And Jazz laughs. Fuck it all. It doesn't matter. Okay. Jazz sounds proud. She sounds proud about everything. Even the things she probably shouldn't be proud about. Dad tells Jazz she should be ashamed of herself. She isn't, though. Well, she... Take it from someone who's very optimistic. She might be ashamed, she's just not showing it. Instead, she kind of just takes that shame and looks at all the positives on it. That's why she's this way. Jazz is stronger than that. Jazz always says that she doesn't have a single ounce of shame in her body. Maybe that's a good thing. It is a good thing. It's a very good thing. It, well, sometimes. Most of the time, it's a good thing. There are certain circumstances where it's not, but most of the time, yeah, that's, it's fine. It means she doesn't have to worry. Not like me. I worry about everything. You can't drop the ball on this one, Lynn. Go and make Dad proud. And don't pass out, FYI, the kind, that kind of fucks up your chances. I'll keep it in mind. With a dad like hers, would it surprise you if she passed out? I mean, fuck's sake, 91 out of 100 stress. Or I'm guessing it's 100 since it's a percentage. I peer into the bread bin, even though I don't want any toast. What phone? Okay, whatever. I'm worried if I have any breakfast, I'll throw up on the train. Vomiting over a young child would be very... It would be far, far worse than knocking into them with my school bag. It doesn't matter anyway. There are only crusts left. Okay. Alright. You may pick up your pens and open your papers. Your exam has be has now begun. A flurry of noise surrounds me. Huh. Hundreds. I think there are around 200 kids in my year. Of maths exam papers are opened up and smoothed out by manicured fingers and bitten nails alike. If this was a thing where it asked me questions... I, don't, I doubt it will, being that it's a visual novel, but if it did, I'd probably zoom through all of them like that. <laughs> well, I would. She wouldn't. I'm a little slower to start than the rest of my peers. I jolt. It feels like a screwdriver has been inserted into the base of my neck. What am I doing? I'm doing... nothing. Oh, okay. I'm sitting here. Staring dumbly at the clock mounted on the wall. It's thumpy to fuck. On um, Thursday, November 20,000th, in the year 19,764,800 by the tail. <laughs> Our school's a little outdated, so am I, apparently. We do our exams in this old gym hall that hasn't been refurbished since 1980. It smells of dust and old sweat. The windows are small and high up. They only let in the barest minimum of light. I feel like I'm in a prison. Let me out! A prison filled with rows upon rows of desks and chairs with over 200 teenage boys and girls poring over their maths exam paper. I was entered for the higher tier paper. I should have been doing fa foundation. My teacher had too many expectations. I think he was spurred on by my dad's fervent insistences during parents' evening that I'm the smart one in the family. Thanks, Dad. I'm horrible at math, but thanks a lot. Sometimes in a few of the practice papers I did in class, I managed to get Bs. Sometimes meaning once. Ugh. The rest of the times I got Cs or Ds. Susie's is the second set for math, and though she hardly ever studies, she's never received anything less than a B. Life isn't fair. Speaking of Susie, 
Hi. Her last name is Hastings. This is a very odd detail to add at this point in the game. I mean, I'm almost at 100 stress, and what? You're telling me this now? I feel like the game's gonna end somewhere around when the stress hits 100. She's sitting a couple of seats in front of me. I can see her brown pigtails bouncing as she peers through her booklet. Her pen, overly cute and pale pink, glints, glints? No, glints beneath the dim lights. She's writing. Shh, quiet. No talking during the test. Only five minutes have elapsed, but it looks like she's finished the first couple of pages already. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> oh, hi, sir. I, 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 you have a nice shirt. <laughs> One of the invigilators clears his throat. I shift suddenly guilty. The invisible screwdriver applies even greater pressure to the base of my neck. Does it look like I'm cheating? I hope it doesn't look like I'm cheating. I open out I open out my exam booklet and stare. Random groups of numbers stare back at me, broken up with dotted lines for me to write down my answers. I have to pick up my pen. I have to gather my senses. I have to start writing. But I can't. Okay. My brain freezes. Well, have some hot chocolate or cocoa or something. Or to coffee if you have to. Something. Wake that brain up, yo! The questions near the beginning of the exam paper aren't even that difficult. I've never had any issues with these before. Find the perimeter of this shape. What is the circumference of the circle? Seriously, these questions? This is... <sighs> This is junior high elementary school stuff, come on. Well, this isn't, but I mean... Diameter, really? I learned that in sixth grade. It's not hard. It isn't! I've answered questions like these before, but I can't now. For some reason, nothing makes sense anymore. Okay. My breath catches in my chest. The whole world around me spins. I feel like I might fall from my chair, but the act of falling requires too much energy. All I can do is slump. I press one hand against my chest. My fingers are shaking. I am too anxious to even raise my hand. I don't think I could walk to the toilet even if I did get permission, which is unlikely. The head invigilator is pretty scary. I don't want to deal with her. I don't want to deal with any of this. God, but how disappointed will Dad be? He'll all be so disappointed that I turned out to be an idiot. The biggest idiot. Well, actually, if you think about it, they can blame yourself because they're the one. They're the ones pushing you to an e e extent that not e that you know you can't do. So that's not fair on you. Ten years of education and for what? I'm wasting it. I can't believe I'm wasting everything. Oh boy, it's gonna happen at a hundred. Susie's pale pink pen bobs. It catches in the light. I would guess a hundred percent stress is probably gonna make me pass out or something. Like just, I'm so stressed that I black out. Makes the most sense to me at least. It okay? So if it goes, if the whole thing goes black, or if it like change shifts like that all of a sudden after the 100% hits, then I'm going to assume I'm just passed out. And whatever I did, knowing the past, I'm going to assume I'm dreaming within whatever next scene comes. I'm going to assume that. I might be wrong, but I don't know. When I squint, I can see the individual particles of dust swirling in the air. Ten minutes have gone by. I still haven't written anything. Everybody else is writing. I'm not. I can't. Why? I reach for my pen. My palms are slick with sweat. I bet Lynn's having no problem with this paper. She's in the highest set for math. And though I've never seen any of her work, I'm sure she's a straight-A student. She's just, the sort, she's just that sort of girl. 
I wonder where she is. Hey, Lynn! Where are you? I want to kiss you. Apparently. <laughs> I, <laughs> I glance about the gym surreptitiously. Surreptitiously, yeah. Not because I want to cheat. I'm not brave enough to, for that. But because I'm curious. We are seated in alphabetical, alphabetical order. So she'd be on the right side, correct? Because I believe in uh, England, it goes right to left. Like, in their sense of reading and organizing. So, like, A would be in the upper, upper right, and then Z would be, like, in the bottom left. My last name is Harper. Lindsay's Aitken. She'll be further ahead of me, maybe to the right? Yep. Ah. There. Hi, Lynn. I can see her. She's pretty far away, but I can see her clearly. Her hair falls around her shoulders in shimmering waves. She pauses, her pen still poised in her right hand, and glances upwards. Maybe she's staring out the window. Maybe. Is she so con... Fuck. I was about to say confined. Is she so confident in her own abilities that she doesn't need to focus on the exam paper? I wouldn't think so. I shift and rub my thighs together. I'm sweating. Why is it so hot today? I think it's just you. It must be because there are so many sweaty, stinking human bodies crammed together in this room. I'm sorry, sweetheart, but that's not how bodies work. It didn't feel that hot when I was waiting for the train. Lukewarm more than anything. Lukewarm more than anything. The nightmare surfaces to my mind once more in alarmingly vivid detail. The Buzz Lightyear nightmare? <laughs> or the bug nightmare or the mirror one. It gets clearer and clearer. The more I will the more I will for it to go away. Like the legs of a spider slowly emerging from a sinkhole. Ugh. Lynn's hands against my cheeks. Her lips against mine. The sudden intense burning. My eyes melting out of my skull. Ugh. Don't remind me. I draw in a sharp breath and grit my teeth together. Can't focus on my exam paper. It's all nonsense to me. Just numbers that have no meaning in blank spaces to show my working when I can't work anything out at all. I don't understand a thing. All I can do is stare at the back of Lynn's head. Half an hour has elapsed. Sup, Lynn? Lynn is looking back down at her exam paper. Her slender fingers turn over a new page. Her motions are so casual, they almost feel insulting. Is she trying to make me feel bad? Doubtful. No, probably not. I doubt she even knows I exist. Doubtful, again. My stomach turns. I hate her. I really, really hate that girl. Why? I still don't understand this. You just randomly say it. Do you even know her in any extent? If only she would disappear. Then, none of this would be happening. That's not true at all. Everything would be so much better. If she had never been born. Ugh. Okay, there's a hundred. Oh, I mean, I don't remember closing my exam booklet. Well, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm assuming we're asleep. I don't remember putting my pen down. I hardly even remember picking my pen up. I don't remember holding my exam booklet in the air for the invigil, invigilators to collect. I don't remember being dis dismissed from the exam hall. Yeah, there's no way I'm not asleep. And I don't remember collecting my bag from the back of the room. And I don't remember exiting the school and making my way back to the train station. But I must have done, because I'm here now. Well, I'm going to assume you're asleep. I feel like a large part of my life has been wiped clean away. Did I talk to Susie? I'm sure I did. Or maybe she tried to talk to me. I don't remember. <clears throat> yeah, you're asleep. A lot of memory doesn't exactly come with you when you're asleep, so yeah, you're probably definitely asleep. 
She probably wanted to compare answers. Not that she needs to. Susie's far, far smarter than I am. I have no advice to give her. No advice other than don't fuck up like I did. Not writing a single thing in your exam book that will do that to you. No kidding. <laughs> fuck you up, I mean. Well, no. I never would have guessed. <laughs> oh well. Eh. It's too late to worry about that. The exam's over now. The whole time I stared at the back of Lynn's head. I didn't answer any questions. Not one. Dad's going to kill me. He's definitely going to kill me. He won't kill me right away, because he won't find out. But when my results come in and he discovers I got a U on my mass exam, he'll flip his lid. He'll be so, so angry. And it's all my fault. I wonder if he'll be angrier than he was when he learned about Jazz's baby. Maybe. Failing one exam is potentially just as life-changing as having a baby. There's no way I'll be able to make up the grade in my second math paper. Even if I got full marks, I'd be lucky to scrape a passing grade. So it's over. I failed math, and now I failed life too. Your dad, your dad's not gonna kill you for this because he knows you do bad in math. His goal was for you to at least try. Of course you didn't, so I mean, I guess if you tell him that, then obviously, but... I failed everyone. I'm a failure. But it isn't my fault. It isn't. Yes, it is. You don't want it to be. That's why you're saying it's not, but it is. It is. Sorry, darling, but it is. I glance at the electronic signboard, but I don't see it. All of a sudden, the station looks rather different. Yeah, there's no way you're not asleep. It isn't the same station I usually stand at, waiting for the train to... Yep, you... Well, well, actually, maybe she just fell asleep now. Because maybe she was awake, and she just... She blacked out, so she doesn't remember doing specific things, and it's just all blur. But if the station changed drastically, then either she's been asleep this entire time, or she's at least asleep now. Waiting for the train to take me back home. There are no pedestrians, no vending machines, no board displaying the next trains. The tracks are old and rusted. They're overgrown with moss and stinging nettles. Everything is dark gray and dreary. This place looks like it hasn't been used in a long, long time. It's derelict, derelict, sorry, all but deserted. I'm the only person here. Am I still in London? Am I dreaming? Yes. Maybe I'm still in the exam hall. Probably. Maybe I passed out during my exam. Yeah, that's, that's what my guess is. Is this another dream? Most likely, yeah. But if it is a dream, then why does it feel so real? Well, to be fair, you have set, you have pinpointed that in the past, the other ones did kind of feel pretty real as well. The air smells stale. The sky is dark gray. The clouds are light gray. The ground and the grass that grows upwards through the ground are black as pitch. Yeah, that off the bat shows that it's obviously not real. The whole world begins to distort. I hold a hand against my eyes. They're burning. Yup. Mm-hmm. Definitely a dream. I'm burning. It's just like one of my dreams, because it is. Nightmares, I mean. I only ever seem to have nightmares. In this strange, bizarre, surreal world, anything could happen. Fish could swim in the air, birds could fly in the water, the days could reverse, and tomorrow would be yesterday. There's no concept of time, but my heart continues to pound inside my chest and my lungs continue to take in oxygen. Okay. Alright then. A fine sheen of rain begins to fall from the sky. It's almost like the world is crying. That's far too poetic for a notion for a young girl. Or for a young stupid girl like me. Oh, come on. Girls like me who can't answer a single question on their mass GCSE paper, don't deserve to think such fanciful things. 
This train station, however, is certainly fanciful enough. Is this my own world? Am I the only person here? Maybe. Oh, no. Hi, Lynn. Um, excuse me. You're in my class, right? No. I'm not alone. Of course I'm not. Even in my own delusions, I can't be on my own. I can never be on my own. Who would want to be? That's my question. Who would want to be alone? <sighs> You're going back to Strawberry Hill, aren't you? I think so. Is that where I's going? I'm going to move this over a little bit. You over there. Cool. Okay. Her inquiry is polite, but it makes me grit my teeth together. Why? It feels like she's looking down on me. Do you know if any trains are running? Um... This is also strange. There's nobody else here, so... I was wondering if you knew what was going on. No idea. Why are you in my dream? Why is she asking me this? Do I look like I would know? Well, she doesn't know if you know or not. That's why she's asking. <laughs> I don't know anything. Maybe behind her innocent facade she's mocking me. Just like everybody else. She's mocking me because I'm not her. I'm just me. Is this seriously how it's going to end? Just you being depressed? Plain boring Lynn. Not Lynn. She isn't me. I wish I was her. Or maybe she was me. That we were the same. But we're not. We can't be. Um, excuse me. Lynn? Okay, obviously since you guys never talk, this has to be a dream. There's no way she would know your name. <laughs> Unless this is a dream. Because that would just be plain out weird. I don't think she's ever addressed me before. She hasn't. That's why I'm assuming this is a dream. I'm sticking with that notion. <laughs> maybe that's why she sounds so hesitant. Or maybe it's because of the expression on my face. I don't know. I don't know what my own face looks like. But it's probably quite scary. Uh, Lynn, are you by any chance feeling sick? I am sick. I'm sick of her. Why? What'd she ever do to you? Lynn? She extends her arm out slowly. Is she going to touch me? My body shivers. I want her to touch me, but at the same time, I don't. I can't let her, so I take a step backwards. Disgusting. What? I excuse me? D didn't you hear me? You're disgusting. Why? What gives you the right to say that? I push her away hard. I push so hard, in fact, she stumbles. Her eyes widen in surprise. Uh oh. Uh. If this continues, I'd run. I would run if I were you. She falls backwards. Her behind hits the ground. Oh, okay, so it'd be hard to run like that. Crab walk away! <laughs> With a soft thud. She blinks up at me, anxious and unsure and afraid. Yes. She should be afraid. What?! I'm the one with the power here. You're a fucking megalomaniac. I don't usually have power in my dreams, but I do now. You would be foolish if I did not use it. Right? No! You'd be foolish to use it! If I know what you're talking about. I kneel down, straddling Lynn's chest. My thighs pin her limp body at both sides. I need to block off her escape routes. Oh god, I don't like where this is going. Even if she tried to throw me off, 
I don't think she could. Her arms are white as chalk, skinny like twigs, and she doesn't have enough power to push me away. I won't let her push me away. L Lin, you... W why? Why should I need to answer her? I don't need to answer. Shut up! I slap her across the flight. Fa face, yes, face. Her head jerks to one side with a sickening smack. For a few moments, I worry I might have shattered her skull. Oh, obviously, this is a dream. There's no way that can happen IRL. You can't smack someone and then break their head. Is she really that fragile? Of course she is. I'm fragile too. That fragile? No. Nobody is that fragile. And I mean body, not nobody as in one word. No, space, body. Maybe all people are to a certain extent, even people like Dad, but I'm not the same as Lynn. We can't be. L Lynn, why are you doing this? Lynn blinks at me. Her eyes are filled with tears. Okay. A dark, deep, purplish bruise blossoms across her cheek like a rare flower. It's almost pretty. Not pretty enough. I want to hurt her more. Much, much more. I'm tired. I'm tired of being the one who gets hurt all the time. I slap her again. And again. Ugh. And again. Each time her head jerks ob obligingly. Obligingly. She's so easy to play with. And fun, too. Like a doll. She's an incredibly lifelike, life-size doll, with teeth that rattle across in her skull when I hit her. I I know we're not close, but, but I didn't think you disliked me this much. D did I do something wrong? If you even have to ask, that shows you don't understand. W what? You don't understand. You've never even tried to understand. But, but we we've never even spoken her voice is muffled through her sobs the sound makes my head hurt the invisible screwdriver is back it bores into the base of my neck with frightening precision I need her to stop talking how do I make her stop talking that's enough I don't want to hear your voice anymore you need to atone for what? Yeah, atone for what? For what indeed? What did she do? What did she do? She didn't do anything. Then you really shouldn't be doing this. But she needs to pu be punished. She's making me doubt myself. I can't do that. If I start to doubt myself, who else can I blame for my faults and flaws? I don't have anybody else I can take this out on, and nobody will listen. Nobody who will understand. It doesn't make sense even to me. Of course, it doesn't make sense to her. That's why she can't talk. She absolutely, definitely can't. If she talks too much, I'll start to realize how stupid this all is. Talk, Lynn! I'll realize just how hollow and empty I am. You know, and... Oh, my God. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. I, I always have hated you. But why? There is no reason. No logical reason, anyway. No logical reason, anyway. It's because you look just like... That's bullshit. That's a stupid reason to hate somebody. W what? You look like me, but you're better than me. You're better in each and every way. Her name is even longer than mine. Lynn with an E. You'd earn more points if you played it on a Scrabble board, as you've said so many times at this point. Not that, not that names are allowed, it's against the rules to play names in Scrabble, strictly speaking. But that's never stopped Jazz before. Jazz has no shame. I have too much. Apparently, when I touch myself, I pull stupid faces. I'm an idiot schoolgirl who doesn't know what she's doing. But it doesn't really matter, because no man will ever find me attractive anyway. No woman either. What about Lynn? I bet she doesn't pull stupid faces. 
She's probably better at making herself feel good than I am. She'll beat me at everything simply by being alive. There's only one solution then. Kill her? Is that what you're implying? You're gonna try to kill her. Disappear. Just disappear. Go away, go away, go away. I grab hold of her shoulders tight, my fingers dig into her flesh. She whimpers. It's not enough. No! I slam her head against the cold, hard floor over and over again. I slam it hard with more strength than I know I possess. Her skull cracks. Maybe it fractures. Maybe it breaks. Maybe holes are opening up inside her head. And her brains are starting to leak out. I wonder what brains look like. I've never seen them before. Are they gray? Biology books I saw when I was a kid. Brains are always bright pink. They are. That's accurate. They're covered in red because of blood, but other than that, yeah, they are. I'm not stupid enough to believe that's really true. Just what is true anyway? Is this real? None of it feels very real. None of it. Except the six smacks of Lynn's head against the concrete floor. The water falls around me. It's almost like the sky is crying. Lynn is crying too. Her nose is running. Her pretty face is covered in red and blue and purple bruises. She's bleeding. She's leaking. But she's still alive. Her body twitches. Her breath forces its way out of her lungs slowly. In and out. In and out. She's so persistent. Just disappear. Go away. Leave me in peace. What the hell? Doesn't she know what happens to witches? That's right. She's a witch. She's a witch who's stolen what should be mine. That kind of makes you look like a witch, you know? I have nothing. She has everything. That's fundamentally unfair. She deserves to be punished. But Lynn, why? She looks at me. Her eyes are glassy. They swim with tears. She's so wet you could probably stick a goldfish or two in one of her eye sockets. I bet it would be able to bob along quite happily. That is, if goldfish are saltwater fish, I'm not sure. I'm not smart. But I am smart enough to know the answer to her question. I have to hurt her. She has to suffer. That's just the way of the world. No, it's not. All because I'm not you. And I wrap my fingers around her throat. Wait, that's it? What? Ah, oh, well, that's a fucked up ending. That is dark. Really well written, really well thought, really well thought through, but that is a very, very dark end. If, uh, as far as the story goes, it's really well done, but I, I would recommend like having a way to show kind of a better ending or extend the story a little bit, just. Because I still think that's a dream. I still think that's a dream. I still think this ended on a nightmare or a dream, I guess, in her sense. I don't even know. I don't know what to call that one. But yeah, I, I, I would definitely recommend like creating an, expan an extension to this a little bit just to show a better ending, like a happier ending for her. Because there's got to be an ending somewhere in her life where it ends better than that. <sighs> but anyway... I've been going for 40 minutes, so I'm going to end this episode and this series here. So thank you guys for watching this video and this series, if you liked it. If you liked the video, push that like button in so far you can't see it anymore. If you haven't seen the other videos, go check them out in the playlist. Uh, link in the description will be below for the playlist of the series. Um, I'm out, and I'll see you guys next in the next series or video or whatever it might be. <laughs> Bye!